Hello, I'm Richard Raffin and we're in Canberra in Australia. And you know we're in Canberra because there are a couple of kangaroos hopping around down here. I live about 10 minutes from here across the city. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> right, I'm just trying to get the place tidy before we make this uh, video. This is the wood turning end of my workshop. Uh, this is my VL300. I've worked on one of these for close on 20 years. I've got a bench here which is kind of fitted into the wall and I find this really convenient for the tools. I've got a lamp which moves around everywhere so I can see what I'm doing, bring light exactly where I want it. I have dust extraction. There's a big three horse dust extractor up beyond these walls. So I've got two inlets here, one in the front which is very important for bowl sanding. Tucked away away from most of the shavings are my chucks. And then on a little bench below, I've got all the kind of day-to-day -day rubbish. I've got a lump of wax. This is a lump of rubber for cleaning sanding belts. Down in the drawers here, away from the shavings again, are the abrasives and other bits and pieces. The grinders are only a step away. I've got all the jigs and bits to go with them up here. A bench where I keep other tools, uh, finished work and blanks. And that's pretty convenient too for the bandsaw, which is over here. And if I've got anything really heavy, I can just lift one from the other. And in the background, we've got my little teaching lathe, and I also use that for some small jobs. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the basic techniques for turning wood on the lathe. There's nothing more boring than a demonstration where everything goes according to plan. Life's just not like that in the real world. In this video, you'll see things going wrong, often intentionally. So I can show you a seeming disaster can be recovered and along the way you'll get to see techniques that can be adapted to all manner of situations. Personal safety should be a constant concern around the lathe. When things go wrong on the lathe they go wrong really fast and it's not a question of if it's going to happen it's just when. It'll happen sometime. If you don't have a catch wood might split and it just explodes spinning at high speed. You don't want to be in the way, and if you are, you want to be wearing a face shield or a helmet. I've had a number of bad accidents over the years with some nasty injuries that could have been worse had I not been wearing this helmet with its impact-resistant face shield. This also has a built-in dust extraction, and I live in this helmet when turning. For this video, I'm not actually wearing the helmet so that I can talk to the camera, but my glasses are shatterproof. If you don't have anything similar, you should wear a face shield like this, or at the very least, some eye protection. And some form of dust protection is also essential. At the least, a mask. Much better is to spend some money on some proper dust extraction, as much as you can afford. Well, I think that's about all we can cram onto a two-hour tape, but I know some of you will have been wondering about the tools. Most of the tools uh, I use are made by Henry Taylor in Sheffield and there is a Raff and Signature range which a lot of these belong to. Some are in the original handles which they came in, some are in handles I've made, some have been put in glazer handles once the glazer tools had worn out. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, Sorby tools and I've got this PNN skew chisel which I really like and one of their detail gouges.